A bunch of strangers are on an island in the South Pacific. How did they get there? Are they dead? If this sounds familiar, it is because you have either watched the TV show Lost or read The Invention of Morel. Maybe both. Hi, my name is Juan. Welcome to Bookish Islander. Today, I want to talk about the breakthrough novel by the Argentinian writer Adolfo Pioi Casares, The Invention of Morel. But before you click away, let me tell you that my review won't include any spoilers. I will only talk about the plot ever so briefly, so please stay on. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You will not only be making my day, but also you will be helping other people find my videos. Thank you. So here's a summary of the plot of the invention of Morel without any spoilers. Escaping a life prison sentence, a Venezuelan political fugitive hides on a desert island in the South Pacific. He only begins to write a diary the day a group of tourists arrives on the island. But just who are those people and what are they doing on this remote island? Okay, that's all I'm going to say about the plot. If you want answers to those questions, you will need to read the novel. And by the way, you can buy the novel from the book depository and get it delivered for free. I've included links to both the English translation and the Spanish edition in the description box for this video. If you buy this book or any other book using my links, I'll get a small commission. It won't cost you anything extra and you will be supporting my channel. The invention of Morel defies easy classification. You can think of it as an important novel in Latin American literature. You can also think of it as a great science fiction or fantasy novel, perhaps the best ever written in Spanish. But you can also think about it as a complex literary novel. If you think about the invention of Morel as any of those, you will not be wrong. Do you know how some novels are underestimated upon publication and only gain critical acclaim over time? That is not the case with the invention of Morel. The best Latin American writers of its time thought the novel was great. I'm talking about people like the Argentinian writer Julio Cortázar, the Cuban Alejo Carpentier, the Colombian Gabriel García Márquez, and even the Uruguayan Juan Carlos Onetti. The novel was heaped with praise. But the biggest champion of the invention of Morel was Jorge Luis Borges, who thought this novel was perfect. This is hardly surprising because Borges and the author of this novel, Bioy Casares, were best friends and also close literary collaborators. So much so that Borges wrote the prologue for this novel in Spanish and his sister, Nora Borges, also designed the cover for the first edition, which came out in 1940. I am fond of this cover because even though it looks rather dated to us now, it reproduces a map of the fictional island in the novel. Now, I'm not sure if a cover like that, even with a more up-to-date design, would work today because I suspect some readers might find it spoilery. I don't know, we're living through some strange and dark times. But let's talk about the friendship between Borges and Bioy Casares because that's important and also I think interesting. Both Argentinian writers met in 1932 at a party organized by their fellow writer and intellectual Victoria Ocampo. As an aside, Victoria Ocampo was the sister of Bioy Casares' wife Silvina Ocampo. Silvina was also a writer and and I'd love to be able to talk more about her and her writing, but all her books are currently out of print in Spanish. I'd be particularly interested in reading her short stories. All I know about Silvina Ocampo and her relationship with her husband and, um, and their common friend Borges, I know thanks to this excellent biography entitled The Younger Sister, um, which is also by a novelist and short story writer, Mariana Enriquez. I've been reading a lot by Enriquez recently, this author, um, so I might talk about her, uh, writing about her books soon. But let's go back to Bioy and Borges. Apparently, the two writers got on from the moment they met at that party and their friendship lasted for the rest of their lives. Well, I think it'd be better or more accurate to say that their friendship lasted through Borges' life because he died, Borges died in 1986, which is more than 10 years before the death of his best friend, Bioy Casares, who passed away in 1999. Both writers had a lot in common. Some friendships are hard to explain, but the closeness between Bioy and Borges makes sense even on paper. Both writers had a lot in common. Some friendships are hard to explain, but the closeness between Bioy and Borges makes sense even on paper. 
Now, apart from being writers, and that's not always reason enough for two people to be friends, otherwise there wouldn't be literary rivalries, they both hailed from middle-class backgrounds, spoke several of the same languages, apart from Spanish, of course, and they both shared similar, similar literary tastes. Bioy Casares and Borges had a passion for popular detective fiction, for instance. I cannot think of another case when two writers got along together like this and managed to collaborate fruitfully in so many common literary projects. Although Borges is, without a doubt, the most famous and acclaimed of the two, I haven't found any evidence of a possible rivalry between both writers. Silvina Ocampo was also part of this group. Although, according to her uh, biography, her relationship with Borges was a bit problematic at times. But she also had a complicated relationship with her husband. That's another story for another time. It would be unfair to exclude her from the literary collaborative friendship because she had a clear role in it. In fact, the three of them, Ocampo, Borges and Bioy, edited the Book of Fantasy. Um, in Spanish, that's Antología de la Literatura Fantástica, which is a compilation of fragments, short stories, and poems by writers such as Ursula K. Le Guin, James Joyce, Julio Cortázar, Jean Cocteau, um, Louis Carroll, Tolstoy, among many others. Borges and Bioy wrote many books together, but Bioy also had a fruitful solo career, as it were. In fact, several um, short story collections by him had been published before his breakthrough uh, with the invention of morale happened in 1940. Later, after this book, he continued writing essays, short stories, novellas, novels, screenplays, and other genres. His last books came out in Spanish in the 1990s. Now, I have only read The Invention of Morel, which is by far his most famous book. And a word of warning here, one can go down a rabbit hole with Borges, Bio and Ocampo, but it would take many years to read everything they wrote, let alone the myriad of books written about them. Now, apart from rereading The Invention of Morel and reading the book of fantasy, I'd love to read his book, Borges, in which through Bioy's Collected Diaries, he charts his friendship and collaboration with the great writer. As far as I know, this book is currently out of print. Um, I know that it's hard to believe, but I haven't been able to find a copy of it as much as I've tried, and I have tried hard, but I will persevere. I know I've been talking a lot about Bioy and his friendship with Borges, and I've hardly said anything yet about the invention of Morel. Okay, do you want me to talk about the invention of Morel? Here we go. It is challenging to talk about this novel without spoilers, but I'll try my best. There is a twist, an explanation for all the strange things that go on in the island. For me, knowing what that is doesn't make me enjoy the novel less. Not at all. I didn't know what it was the first time I've read it, but when I reread it, when I, every time I reread it, I enjoy it just the same, or perhaps even more, even though now I know from the start what was really going on. Having said that, I think that many first time readers would prefer to approach the invention of Morel knowing as little about it as possible. Those readers, I think, would love to find out for themselves by reading the book and not by someone telling them on YouTube. I keep thinking of those readers, so what I'll say about this novel from here on until the end, I'll say it thinking about them, okay? I don't tend to talk much about plot in my reviews anyway, and whatever I was going to say about the plot of the invention of Morel, I already said it at the introduction uh, to this video, so don't worry about it. Now, let's talk about some of the characters. We have the fugitive. Uh, we know that he's a political prisoner who escaped from his country. It is never altogether clear how he got to the island. In fact, he's not even sure himself and he's not even sure where he is, and all we know, we know from him. Uh, we know very little about, very little else about his life or about who he is, but we know that he suffers from extreme paranoia. Now, it makes sense for a fugitive to feel like that, particularly when he realizes that he's no longer alone on the island. But also, his paranoia is something that we need to consider while we read on. How much of what he describes in his diaries is real and how much of it is it imagined because of his paranoia? Is he hallucinating? Then, there's the group of tourists that one day shows up on the island. 
That's when the fugitive starts writing his diary and therefore the starting point of the novel. I will only mention two other characters, the beautiful and enigmatic Faustine and the scientist Morel. Bio y Casares created Morel as a reference to Dr. Moreau of the late 19th century science fiction novel The Island of Dr. Moreau by the English writer H.G. Wells. No doubt that novel was one of the main inspirations for Bio y Casares, but if you have read The Island of Dr. Moreau, do not expect the invention of Morel to be a ripoff of it, because it is not. There are other references to literary works and even popular culture in the invention of Morel. One of my favorites is the use of the then popular song T for Two and how that song foreshadows something that would be a massive spoiler if you knew about it, so I'm gonna leave it here. The invention of Morel is a rollicking read, uh, which is not something that most people would associate with literary fiction. It's not a word that they would use to describe literary fiction, but reading this short novel is so much fun. It almost feels like a game. We collect clues along the way and try to put them together before the end. There is a mystery that needs to be solved and the reader must work with the text to do that, to solve the mystery. And that is why I think that while it is not necessary to read this novel more than once to get it, rereading it is so pleasurable. You know how some people have reading rituals like they read the same book once a year on a specific date, things like that? Well, I feel like I could read The Invention of Morel at least once a year for the rest of my life and always find something new in it. But I don't want to give you the impression that The Invention of Morel is a difficult novel because it is not. I said it is a rollicking read and I stand by that. Think of it more as a game and not as hard work. You can also approach this novel differently. You don't have to try to work out what is going on to enjoy it. You can just read along and enjoy the enigmatic events and characters until you come to the revelations that are made explicit on the text. What is the invention of Morel about and what is the author trying to do? Okay. I think it is important to examine what an author is trying to do and then assess the book, not just this book, any book, based on how successful he or she is at that. That is how I approach literary fiction anyway. In this case, I think the author wants to put us on the shoes of the fugitive. This is what first person narrations are supposed to achieve anyway. And in this case, not only are we supposed to develop empathy for the fugitive, but I think we're also supposed to see things from his perspective. And what is his perspective? It is the perspective of someone who has run away and is hiding to survive. Someone who is understandably paranoid. And as we read on, we are meant to develop a certain level of paranoia ourselves. And I think the book is successful at that. The invention of Morel develops uh, certain themes, uh, mostly mortality, but also solitude and love, and how those two themes complement and affect each other. Earlier, I said that you could think of this novel differently, but I didn't mention that you could also see it as a love story. And you could. You could also see the invention of Morel as part of a tradition in science fiction. But when you think about that, you realize what a breakthrough this novel was. Not just in the career of Bioy Casares, but in the history of Latin American or even Spanish language literature. If we choose to classify the invention of Morel as science fiction, as a science fiction novel, it immediately stands out in the Latin American or Hispanic canon. Why? Because there is really not a tradition of science fiction writing in Spanish. It is well known that Bioy Casares and Borges were influenced by English literature and English language literature, and I would say that they introduced genres that were rarely, if at all, exploited in Spanish. If I am right, the invention of Morel could be, if not the first one, at least one of the first science fiction novels ever written in Spanish. It is certainly the most famous and the most celebrated. I often think that much of Borges' writing feels like it was written in English and then translated, albeit extremely well translated, into Spanish. But just to be clear, that is an impression I have because I can read in both English and Spanish. But Borges, who was also fluent in English, and so was Bioy Casares, wrote his books in Spanish. Now, I can't 
tell if the writing by Bioy Casares feels the same in that respect because I have only read The Invention of Morel so far. If you have read it in Spanish, what do you think? But I think the main point I want to make about language is that both Borges's works and The Invention of Morel would read perfectly fine in English translation. This is not the kind of novel that would suffer in translation. I think you could read The Invention of Morel in any language and absolutely nothing would be lost in translation. And that is rare in Latin American literature. No doubt you can read works of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, for example, just to mention a world famous author in translation. But I think a lot of what makes his writing so exuberant in Spanish would be lost. Perhaps not so much in Portuguese or Italian, but definitely in English or in German. I'm not trying to discourage you from reading Latin American writing in translation, far be it from me. I'm just saying that some authors work better in translation than others, and I truly believe that Bioy or Borges's work would read just fine in any language. And talking about translations, the invention of Morel has also been translated to the screen. I think there are two European movie adaptations of the novel, one Italian and one French, but I've never seen either of them, so I can't comment. Uh, but this novel has also inspired the classic movie last year at Marion Bad by the French director Alain Resnais, and more recently the hit US TV series Lost from ABC. You know, the one about a bunch of plane crash survivor survivors stranded on a strange island? Yeah. If you thought that TV series was a breakthrough and an example of originality on the wasteland that tends to be network television, you better think again. There are many other adaptation, adaptations and other cultural products that have been inspired by the invention of Morel, but my suggestion would be to pick up a copy of the novel and read it as soon as you can, or read it again if you haven't in a while, and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you again very soon, bye for now.